I'm assuming this one's also on. And hitting play on the music. Oh, gotta plug in. And hitting play on the music. Hey guys, welcome to today's video where we're gonna be making these Gick Fun DIY speakers. They're a soldering kit. They were a lot of fun to make, so I hope you guys enjoy this video. Here's everything that comes with the kit. These things all have duplicates. Like there's a second board and there's a second speaker, but uh, couldn't fit them in frame. So here's everything it comes with. And with that, let's get to soldering. Here's the board. It's a little bit different from the ones I usually do. There's an IC on the back and I've never done one of these before, so we'll see how it goes. There we go. That was really difficult, but it's on there now, and I don't think I fried anything, so it should be good to go. Just a side note, I had this desoldering gun, which I don't know if you guys saw, but I did bridge these two pins down here, so it works awesome. You just like load it, stick it in there, and then it sucks out all the extra that's bridging, and it fixes everything. Can't recommend it enough. And there we go, both boards are done. Now all I gotta do is connect the wiring and the speakers to them and then we can give them a test. Okay, so the instructions call for some wiring that uh, it doesn't supply you in the kit. So you're gonna need some wiring. You're gonna need a yellow and green set. You're gonna need a red and black set and you're gonna need a yellow, black and red set. And each of these are about three feet long. So you need these for connecting to the uh, auxiliary cord, you need them for connecting to the speaker, you need them for connecting the power supply to the other side, and you need them for connecting the auxiliary to the other side. Uh, you're also gonna need, for the speaker connections, you're also gonna need a couple of shorter chunks of black and red wires for the speakers. Okay, so according to the instructions, you're gonna need to pick one of your boards to be just kind of your main starter board, and you're gonna take your yellow, black, and red wires, and you're gonna hook your red wire to the positive, your black wire to the negative, and your yellow wire in the middle, and you're also gonna have to take your green and yellow wire set, and you're gonna have to hook your green wire to the negative, and your yellow wire to the middle of these three pins here. So I got them all hooked up, you're definitely going to want a pair of needle nose pliers to be able to pull the wires through the holes, especially trying to get two wires through a single hole. I also attached a little blue strand of wire to the uh, red side because I don't understand why you wouldn't have 
the red going across as well. So we'll see, and if I need it, then I can just hook a wire onto this and go all the way across. Okay, so for hooking up the aux cord, you just take the plug they give you and you unscrew this. And then if you look at the back side, you have a central one, you have an outside one, and you have a big flat one at the bottom. You hook the black up to this big flat one on the bottom. You hook the yellow up to the central one, and you hook the red up to the outside one. That's soldered now, but something's missing from the back side of it. I wonder what that could be. So now I've got to unsolder it and fix this. <laughs> there, all fixed, nothing happened, don't worry about it. Okay, time to hook up the power to these two spots here. So for power, it gives you this USB power cable and it tells you to cut this end off and then use the wires inside to hook up to the uh, power side on your board. Then uh, it says it's five volts. So actually if you go and look at an iPhone uh, box for your phone, they're five volts. So you plug this USB into that and that'll power your board. Okay, this is a lot of fun, but uh, there's all the cables except for the speakers on this board. So I'm gonna attach the other board and then I'm gonna attach the speakers to both and build the housings and then we'll give it a try. They're all soldered together. So all that's left to do is to assemble them into their boxes and uh, then plug them in and see what they do. One eternity of peeling brown paper later, we're done. We have the four sides, front for the speaker, and the back to mount the circuit board. So I'm gonna leave this off for now, and I'm gonna start by building the front. One speaker successfully mounted. Now I'm gonna mount the board to the rear panel. To do that, I use these standoffs, and then I just use the bolts and nuts. One thing I should mention about this, you'll notice this groove is slightly more indented than everything else. That's where your cords are supposed to go through. So I kind of want this orientated with the speaker cables going down and the board sitting up like this. So I'm probably going to have this sitting somewhere like this so that the cords can go down and out through here without having to cross the board. And voila, one completed speaker box. I maybe should have waited to see if they work before putting the whole thing together, but oh well. So now all I gotta do is the other side and then uh, plug them in and see if they work. Okay, moment of truth. I am plugging in. And we have one light on on this speaker and this light flash for like a second so I'm assuming this one's also on and hitting play on the music oh gotta plug in and hitting play on the music okay trial number two plugging in connecting the audio hitting play Okay, so the right speaker is working now. The left speaker is not, but it was before. So I think I need to, this says that there is a music, there's a music level and volume potentiometers. I think that just means I need to turn up the volume and music potentiometers on this one. So I'll do that. Okay, the speakers are done and they work. I've worked out as many of the kinks as I can. That's them just kind of sitting there. You can hear all the feedback. And then I'm going to play my own video because I know that won't be claimed. Video on the Veilman Cable Polarity Checker Kit. You can this hear here, and then this it's unit very fluctuating. Basically, what this is used for is diagnosing problems with electric and circuits. So, useful for 
over a bunch of future videos. So basically what's happening is there's interference and I'm pretty sure it's from the way I've coiled these cables, but it could just be with the ICs. It could be a million different reasons and I don't feel like spending 20 hours chasing it down for a $15 speaker set. So but the kit was a lot of fun to make. They work. If you have the time to just kind of work out the bugs, they're a lot of fun, but yeah, I'm going to leave her at that. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would, if you want to build this kit, it's a lot of fun. You just have to be prepared to spend some time working out the bugs at the end of it. So, uh, anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video.